What's up guys, War here, and today we're gonna talk about end game content, what you're supposed to do at Diablo 3 at the end game, and some suggestions that I'm gonna have for you on how to do that end game farming, which is probably the most fun and the best part of actually playing Diablo 3. So this is gonna apply to hardcore, softcore, and seasonal characters whenever you hit level 70, whether you're starting a new game or you have other characters, whatever the case may be, once you hit 70, there's some end game stuff that you need to do. We're gonna talk about it right here in this video let's do it so starting out guys is after you hit 70 you want to be in adventure mode adventure mode is where all the end game stuff is going to happen this is where you have you can do all your bounties your rifts your greater rifts etc everything is done inside adventure mode you should be done with the campaign but even now the blizzard has changed it to where adventure mode is unlocked for everyone so enjoy the campaign it's really fun but all the end game stuff is going to happen in adventure mode so make sure you're on that the next thing is is we need to get to torment 16 as fast as possible okay torment 16 is the end game difficulty level that you need to be playing on to do all of our farming and all of our end game content so as you guys can see as you go up inside torment levels you get more gold more xp more gems more legendary items additionary additional additionary additional gold xp legendary drops per torment level okay down below like when you start on torment 6 like, eh, 1600% is cool and all, but you get to Torment 16, so how about 7,000%, 17,000%, etc. So, we want to get to Torment 16. Okay, guys, so one of the first things that we're going to look at is end game farming and end game content inside of Diablo 3 is after you hit 70, you want to do bounties, okay? Each act has five bounties that you can do. And completing each of them is going to give you a large Herodric chest, which is going to have some set items in it, okay? Each act has some set items that you're going to get. Like, for example, completing uh, Act 5 and defeating uh, Methylil is going to give you, or defeating him and, like, completing all these is going to give you the wraps, which is really good. Um, but completing bounties is really good because we need these resources, the bounty rewards, to be able to do all of our cube manipulating and re-rolling and all those things so you get those mats all these mats one for each act and you're going to use them to do a lot of the crafting materials and reforging and upgrading inside of the Herodrix or Kanaya's cube so doing bounties is very important a real a real big tip on doing bounties guys is you want to be able to do them in groups so you want to go online or if you have a group of three what you do is each person takes an act you guys all finish your act and then you do like combine on the last act and get it done really, really fast. And then you have all of the bounty uh, caches that open and give you cool stuff. This is also really good for getting the Ring of Royal Grandor, which is important. Leoric's crowns, the wraps, and I think that's pretty much it. All the other items can just be whatever, but the main thing we're going for is the bounty materials. You need a bunch of those. So bounties is one of the number one things that you need to be doing after hitting level 70. The next thing after getting to level 70 in between doing bounties which is really good is we want to be doing nephilim rifts okay nephilim rifts if you guys were doing them even from 1 to 70 to help level you up nephilim rifts are very important because the higher you get the more greater rift keystones that you're going to attain this is also very good because you're going to be getting blood shards inside of doing nephilim rifts you also get these from doing greater rifts but nephilim rifts and greater rifts are the next two things to be doing nephilim rifts are going to give you some more gear and they're going to give you blood shards and they're going to give you greater rift keystones so finding a really nice build to speed farm nephilim rifts is really great to rack up a bunch of these so you can go on long greater rift uh, runs so greater rifts as you can see you can go much higher than t16 t16 stops at level 75 which is an equivalent to what the normal difficulty is that you're playing in game now as you continue to go higher the monsters get more difficult, more difficult, more difficult, but you're going to get more XP. You're going to get more items. You're going to get more blood shards. Now, I do want to note here that at GR90 is the level cap for items. So you're getting a certain amount of items at level 90, which is the most, but any greater rift higher than 90 is going to be the same amount of items that you would get at 90. So like me, speed farming 105s, I'm going to get the same amount of items that I would get at GR90. So just that's just as a note, guys, but the higher difficulties that you can play and speed farm in, the more EXP, gold, and blood shards that you're going to get for endgame content. 
In addition, Greater Rifts is a really great way. This is how we're going to do get all of our main gear, okay? Like doing normal uh, Nephilim Rifts is going to be good. You're going to get some of these items here and there and they'll drop. But Greater Rifts is going to be the best way to attain more and more gear and better gear. It gives you a lot better chances to roll ancient items. It gives you a better chance of getting the items specifically for your class. So Greater Rifts is probably the best end game thing that you're going to be doing after hitting 70. The next thing to end game in Diablo 3 is your Paragon levels, right? You want to get a bunch of Paragon levels because you want to be able to spend all these points that you have. So that way your character is stronger and stronger and stronger. Now you only need Paragon 800 to max out uh, all of these stats to 50. And then after that, everything goes into Dexterity and Vitality. So Paragon farming is going to be the bestly, bestly, bestly is best done doing greater rift farming. So at GR 105s, I can do these in about a minute and a half with my DH or my monk. So I just speed farm to gain as much Paragon levels as I can. We're trying to get to 1500 before the end of the season, which is still about a week and a half away. It should be no problem. I can do it in like three hours, I think. But Paragon farming is definitely the last thing that you wanna be doing, which is part of the whole pushing towards the end game. Uh, that way you can do even more damage. You can see on your main stat here, I got 21,000 dexterity on my main stat on the sheet. So all of this comes a lot from my items, but a big part of it is because of my Paragon levels that you're gonna get from GR farming. One of the next things you're just gonna be doing a lot, guys, is rolling items with your blood shards. You know, the more, the higher GRs you get, the bigger that this number increases. So I can hold 1600 at one time. And I'm going to spend them on just, you know, rolling for items. You know, if I have a set of bracers that I want to get better, I'm just going to be rolling bracers until I get, you know, hopefully I roll these and get them a little bit better than what they currently are. You know, blood, using blood shards on any of your items that you want to roll for never hurts. You definitely want to do it in, you know, cheapest first because see how they're 25 and then some are 50, 100. And then you have weapons that are 75. You definitely want to do it on all your exterior before doing the weapons and stuff because those are a lot easily, you know, craftable and just easier to attain than spending a hundred on all of these. And then I don't even get a legendary. So, uh, Kadala blood shard farming and rolling is a big way to get a lot of good gear in the end game in Diablo. Now, last and certainly not least, is you want to be augmenting all of your gear and then rolling for stat priorities on your gear. So for example, on, on Valhalla's Bequest, I want chance to deal area damage. So you're gonna re-roll some of these abilities on here to get the specific stat priorities you need. A good way to do that is one, to use the Artisan, where you can re-roll any one of your stats, as you've seen here, for critical hit damage. Or you can just go to the cube and re-roll an entire item if you do reforge legendary and you put this in here and you reforge it, it's going to choose all brand new stats. Now I will say that doing it this way because of the forgotten souls does cost a lot. I only have 2000. I've rolled some items all the way down to where I had zero multiple times getting forgotten souls. It takes a long time to accumulate these because when you're doing GRs, you're basically getting forgotten souls only from um, salvaging legendary or uh, set piece items. So getting a bunch of these and holding these on are good where you want to reroll maybe one thing, try to get it primal, etc. So I definitely suggest doing this last. I would rather try to just keep farming and finding items and then changing maybe one at the artisan like I have here as opposed to just re-rolling it all because the chances of getting something really good is low. It can happen, but it's just very low. So guys, that's going to do it for end game in Diablo 3 and all the stuff that you need to be doing to kind of farm, get better gear, get all of your uh, crafting materials, all that stuff. All this crafting stuff is going to come from salvaging all of your items, whether it's, you know, yellow items blue items gray items you're going to get all these from doing bounties you're going to get them from just farming and salvaging all of the gear that you find and then also just finding them on the ground but this is definitely the best ways to end game farm and end game content in diablo 3 to help push you to get a perfect character or 2000 3000 paragon whatever your end game goal is but the end game in Diablo 3 is really where all the fun begins. So, guys, if you did enjoy today's video, make sure to drop a like as it does help me out, guys. And subscribe if you're new. All the support has been fan 
fantastic. You guys are the freaking best. And I love all the support that you guys have been giving me. I've been really thinking about like starting to stream Diablo 3. Uh, you know on twitch so let me know down in the comments guys if you'd like to see me stream on diablo or on twitch with diablo i just you know i'm real fidgety about it because i want to just bring you guys really good content and diablo is just kind of tough to stream in my opinion but let me know down in the comments if you guys would like me to stream that uh, and as always stay gaming i'll catch you guys in the next one peace